Hi, this is Pastor Ted Marshall. Welcome to VRM's Veterans Radio Ministry. Today's broadcast, we're simul broadcasting on all our video platforms and also live on the radio. And we've got some special guests with us today also. We're going to have some call-in guests. And I think you'll enjoy what we're going to be doing today. We're praying that everything goes good. We've got uh, we've got our super technician, <laughs> Chu, in the background there. He's going to running running everything for us. And uh, the guys that are up there's Drew. You can see him right there. He's uh, in his element now. He's uh, the master of the controls. And uh, he's the one that makes all this happen when it comes to the technology part of this. And um, uh, he's a blessing from, from, from God because I could have never. And I know three other guys sitting next to me here can say, how does he do this? We're watching and seeing what he's doing. It's incredible. But with us today, as Drew, as you can draw back from the, so we can get the whole shot here. And Drew is running cameras, everything else, all remotely. With us today, I've got three gentlemen who are with a very special um, organization, which uh, I am so honored to be part of now. And it's the PCSD Foundation of America. Um, we're going to show a quick video of about the PTSD, and we're come back and introduce you to the Florida, the Florida group here. And Drew, if you would, he's going to put that up on the air. He did all that, and nobody cares, right? Nobody cares, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I just wanted to kill myself oh, many times. Like, you know, pulled out the gun and just put it to my head and talk about Camp Hope. This is the point right here is where everything just changed, you know? And I can't believe it. You know, I look at myself in the mirror sometimes, like, geez, how did this happen, you know? When we began PTSD Foundation of America, statistics were telling us one out of every three adult homeless persons were United States veterans. We lost 7,000 in combat in Iraq and Afghanistan. We're just now coming home, and we've already lost more than four times those who were killed in combat to suicide after coming home. When you come out and walk Camp Hope, you see vets walking all over the campus, going back and forth between classes. And what do you see? You see guys with smiles on their faces. And you go, wait a minute, Doug. You just told me these are the high risk guys, right? Well, why are they smiling? Because of Camp Hope. Really, it's an atrocity to me. It's just shameful that they, you know, come home and, and they're not supported. These are people willing to take their lives after already giving the ultimate sacrifice for me, for you. When I got back, we drowned every one of our memories. Anything I could do to, to take my mind off of it, I started doing. And uh, the bottom floor looked like 96 months in prison. My plan was to go to prison and take out as many bad guys as I could. I asked the magistrate, hey, can, can I have some help? And they said, we think uh, we got a place for you to go. Are you willing to go? I said, whatever you guys think is possible for me to have some type of life because I don't have any hope for it. And I said, the place is called Camp Hope. Everything changed. In 2009, we began with a piece of paper that said we were a nonprofit and a firm belief that what we were going to do was going to work and not only save some lives, but change them. We didn't own a paperclip. Today, we have a five acre campus. We have chapters that run from different cities across the country. A campus with over a hundred people living on it currently, Everything we do for the veteran is absolutely paid for and free. We take care of everything they need while they live with us, six months to a year, sometimes longer. Before they step through that gate, they've been alone. They've been alone with this issue for a long time. When they step through that gate, not only are they amongst 80 to 90 vets just like themselves, there's another 20 to 30 veteran combat, veteran staff members with PTSD out here. And every one of these guys has their back. I was in a very dark place in my, in my life, facing a life sentence, 30 years. Everything that I thought was right was wrong. Everything I thought was wrong was right. You know, and, and a lot of it had to do with the drugs that I was on. And it wasn't until I came to Camp Hope and I got some serious sobriety time under my belt where I finally, my eyes started opening up and realizing just how reckless and wild of a life I was living. It's a lot easier when you're talking to somebody who's, who is another combat vet who has been had those same experiences. Camp Hope offered me a, a place to get all that out with somebody who I trusted and uh, and changed my life. I was facing 16 charges 
uh, six felonies. And the truth of the matter was it was me and me alone. Being here at Camp Hope day by day, moment by moment, I started to realize that I wasn't alone. My name is Roger Cross, United States Army, and I'm alive today because of Camp Hope. My name is Joshua Mayer, I'm in the United States Marine Corps, and Camp Hope has absolutely saved my life. I'm an Army veteran, and Camp Hope saved my life. Camp Hope saved my life, man. If it wasn't for uh, Camp Hope, I wouldn't be here. I was an uh, Army National Guard, combat medic for eight and a half years. I came to Camp Hope, um, and it saved my life. King of Scouts, United States Army. Camp Hope provided me with the tools to help me manage my PTSD and depression. This place is very, very special, very precious. I've watched Army Rangers, SF, snipers, every branch of service come here and they find fellowship, the camaraderie, the brotherhood. We wouldn't give it up for nobody or nothing. Pick up your bags from under the bridges because there is help here in Houston, Texas. The place is Camp Hope. Over 40% of the vets at Camp Hope come from out of state and it's been that way since day one. The need is all over the country. This isn't like something that we think about, you know, it'd be great if we grew this thing to this. This is like, this is a need today. Basically, we've got the widget. You know what we need? We need investment capital. How many corporations have the opportunity to list saving lives on their balance sheets? We'd be glad to give them that opportunity. Everything we were able to do here on this campus and in our chapters, all because of individuals and companies who understand what's going on in our veteran community needs to change. Back in the studio again with me are three gentlemen I'd like to introduce. To my left, right next to me is Nick. Next to him is Lewis and John. And these uh, these young men, which I can say, <laughs> since I'm the old guy, these young men are, are part of the core here in Florida that does so much. And one by one, I want to talk to him a little bit. And first of all, let's start with Nick. Nick, tell us about your job and what you do here and a little bit about how Camp Hope has helped you. For sure. So thank you, Ted. Uh, so we started the chapter here in Florida. It'll be a year next week um, that we've been out here. The need has always been in Florida. It's just been a matter of getting getting everything that we needed in place. And, and we're getting there. Um, it's a slow trek, but, but we're getting it. Uh, in that year span, we've been able to add uh, over 110 veterans and family members to our uh, our CRM, you know, what we use to monitor everything. And we work with those individuals every week. So in just under 12 months, we've been able to impact those lives and hopefully continue to add to it. Um, you know, my job really is to meet you where you're at. Uh, it depends on, you know, PTSD is going to look different for every single person, right? So if, if you're struggling financially, you're struggling with, uh, you know, marital struggles, whatever the case may be, we're going to meet you where you're at. And we're going to do everything we can to kind of get you past that. Every like uh, the video says, everything that we do is at no cost to the veteran or the family. Uh, that does not mean that there isn't a cost associated with it. It does take man hours. It takes a lot of uh, resource prep and just really kind of meeting them where they're at and getting them to a place where they can truly work on some of the things that are bother bothering them versus just the, the things on the surface, like something you know financial or dental or family stress, work, whatever the case may be. Um, so really my job is to facilitate that change and that growth for these individuals. And I do that by continuously to add guys to my team that have the same heart mission and mind for it. Um, you know, I'm a graduate of Camp Hope. It's been over 10 years since I left Camp Hope and I've been doing well ever since. And I'm you know, eternally grateful for, um, for what they did for me. I absolutely would not be sitting in this chair today had I not gone to Camp Hope. And uh, the pivotal changes that they made in my life gave me the opportunity to be a father, be a husband, be a friend, be a brother, be a son, you name it. Right. So uh, I was in a very dark place when I came home from Afghanistan and 
and didn't want to be here anymore. But I was able to get that help out there in Houston. And uh, because of that, I'm able to lead a productive life, life and, and help others now. Um, so that's where Camp Hope, what Camp Hope's done for me, a little snippet of, of my job here in the uh, Florida market. Next to Nick is Lewis. And Lewis, tell us a little about your experience and what's your job and what you're doing now. So my position for the Florida chapter is the assistant general manager. Um, so what I do is I am in logistics uh, and help veterans out, obviously. So, right, PTSD Foundation, right, Florida chapter. Mm -hmm. um, big picture, right, small picture, we help veterans, right? How do we help veterans, right? Um, education, right, communication. How does, when people come back, let's just, let's say Afghanistan, when we come back from Afghanistan, we don't know how to communicate to maybe our spouse, right? I don't like being in crowds, right? We just freak out, we get angry, we get upset. Um, but we teach them, right? Communicate with your spouse, right? Why don't you like being in the crowd? I don't like being in the crowd because being in the crowd in Afghanistan means it could be a, a suicide bomber. It could be, you know, if it's five Marines in one group, that's an easy pickoff for a machine gunner, you know, mm -hmm. an enemy machine gunner. Um, but we don't know how to communicate these things, right? So this is what we do. We help them communicate. We help them with the education portion of how to talk to their family, reintegrate them with their family. Um, we, we, we try to be that bridge um, from living a life of hopelessness and darkness to now being a better person, being a better father, being a better brother, sister, son, husband, whatever the case is. Um, there's a story in the Bible um, when, when Jesus hears a, heals the paraplegic. Um, how did the paraplegic get to Jesus, right? It was, it was a big old crowd. Um, they couldn't get to him, right? Jesus was preaching, they couldn't get to him. They put him on top of a roof, right? They made a hole in the roof and lower him down to Jesus. Right? Who did that? His friends, right? That's what we want to be. We want to be those friends for those veterans um, to help them out, right? To make them understand that there's certain ways to do things and there's certain ways not to do things just to make them, you know, better, better persons, you know, for my kids, example, right? Mm -hmm. I love my kids. I want to be a better father for my kids. I want to be a better man for my kids. Um, and like Nick said, we meet them where we're at, right? We meet them where they're at. Um, another story, right? The, the, the Samaritan woman at the well. In the Bible, Samaritan woman at the well, Jesus meets her, right? And he, they have the conversation, and she's he says, Go get your husband and come back, right? Um, in that conversation, right? Everything happens. Well, you know, two reasons why he told her to get a husband. One, obviously, back then, a man speaking with a woman that's not his wife is a no no, right? Mm -hmm. But the main reason why Jesus told her to go get her husband and come back was because that was her sin, right? He wanted to meet her in her sin. That's what we want to do. We want to meet these veterans where they're at and help them out um, any way we can. You know, PTSD looks different to every individual. It could be, you know, I can't hold the job. Like it could be, I need help with finances. I gotta manage a budget. You know, I can't can't think like that, or I, I just need a service animal. Or whatever PTSD looks for them, mm -hmm. we try to help them in that situation. Thanks, Lewis. Mm -hmm. Next to Lewis is, is John. And look the other way. <laughs> Keep going. There he is. <laughs> John, tell us about your job and how you got involved. Yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll tell you how I got involved first, okay. which was kind of a kind of a, a it's godsend, really the best way I can describe mm -hmm. it. So I. Uh, I knew I wanted to help veterans um, and I was doing so kind of on my own, but just not in the way I am now, but just simple things like mm -hmm. help them navigating the VA or just kind of keeping them updated with how I'm, you know, filing claims or just whatever, whatever it is I was going through, you know, and just to be able to tell another veteran, this is how I did it, you know, really made me feel good. Um, but that was pretty much, you know, uh, the gist of what I was doing. Um, and then it wasn't until I, I started going to church uh, is where I really knew is, is where I knew I wanted to help veterans, like how I wanted to help veterans was through the church. Because once I started going for me personally, it had filled a tremendous hole that was just in my soul, I guess the best way I can 
describe it. And I was just trying to fill it with all sorts of reckless behavior, alcohol, just, I mean, you name it, and just really leaving a tremendous path of destruction, you know, especially to my family. Um, but once I started get, going to church, you know, I knew that that hole got filled. I mean, just really quickly. And I had the sense of just joy and, and just satisfaction and fulfillment and purpose. And um, I felt great. I honestly did. For the first time in my life, I really felt like a new person. And at that moment, it was like I knew this is where and how I need to help veterans. But I really didn't know how to go about that. So, you know, after some conversation with my um my lead pastor there at Grace mm-hmm. Family Church, um, you know, we were trying to bounce ideas off each other, going to you know breakfast and stuff, and you know, really trying to figure out how I can fit in to to, to help veterans out there in the church. And then, just one day out of the blue, um, Pat, my pastor, introduced me to to these gentlemen, and it, you know, had a table set up at the uh, at the church there, mm-hmm. and wanted me to go introduce myself. And from that moment on, I mean, it, I knew that this is how and where I was supposed to be. You know, I don't, I don't really think that any of that was coincidence. Like I had prayed about it, you know, I Mm -hmm. had asked God to just, you know, show me how to help veterans, where I need to help veterans, you know, bring people into my life that can, you know, show me what I need to do. And, and then these guys showed up and uh, yeah. So for me, uh, what I do primarily is outreach. You know, I, I reach out to veterans that, that need help. Um, not necessarily always in crisis, but I mean, it can be anything from needing resources um, for financial resources or auto repair or career resources or, you know, home appliances and roofs and stuff like that. So we we do just about everything. When I, when I say, you know, when someone asks, how do you help veterans? And we say every way, we literally help them yeah. every single way. You can. That's a loaded question. Yeah. You know, one of the unique things, Drew, if you can zoom back on us, on all of us. Oops. <laughs> there you go. Get us all in. Thanks, Drew. One of the unique things about being able to to talk to a, a veteran who's in a crisis that I found throughout the years is that it's hard for them to talk to other people because even when they're talking to their family or friends or whatever, we speak a different language as veterans. We've been through different experiences. And like you said, what's really great, Lewis, about you know certain things that you can't do and you couldn't explain it to somebody. Mm-hmm until you just gave them the, you know, well, here's why this happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is so important that veterans know that when they come and see us and, and talk, talk to the different folks here, that they're talking to somebody who's a battle veteran. They're talking to somebody who's been there, done that, and somebody that can listen and understand and has been through hell twice, mm-hmm. overseas and here at home. Maybe even a couple times here at home, maybe a couple times overseas. But the thing is, is that he's back. He's strong. And not only is he strong, he's strong because somebody helped him. And not only did the veterans help him or get together and say, okay, we're going to, you know, we're trying to get help. But there's also something else that's so important about this organization. It's Christian based. And boy, is that strength. You talk about healing possibilities there. It's beyond what we could ever, ever fathom to imagine. And I think that's why this organization is so important right now and why it works, and why it works so good. Have an incredible, and let's, let's praise God for it right now. It has an incredible record of success. And that success is we keep praying that it stays right where it's at because it's 100%. Not can't hope for those that graduate through it, correct? We're not at quite at 100%, but we're, we're darn close. Um, over the years, our numbers far out, far mm-hmm. supersede anyone else. Um, we have, to my knowledge, never had a suicide at Camp Hope. We have had some guys leave the program and unfortunately uh, lose to those demons. But mm-hmm. um, the difference, too, with us is Camp Hope isn't, it's not a one trick pony, right? Um, it is a six month interim housing residential program. But if you need 10 months, you're going to get 10 months. Yeah. If you need 12, 14, I was there for 14. Um, never received a bill for it. Never got told to you know speed up the process mm-hmm. or you're taking too long or anything like that. So it is, and it's not just the, the 6, 12, 15, however many months you're there. It's after as well, right? If I send a guy out to Camp Hope from Florida, 
uh, when he's done, whether it's he's done in six months or he's done in 10 months, he's coming back to us and he's coming to groups with us. He's going to, we're going to stay on top of him, make sure he's mm-hmm. doing okay. We're going to help him get a job. We're going to help him with, you know, be it whatever the case is, you know, again, meeting him where he's at after he's kind of gotten some of that healing portion done. Um, but our numbers are, are significantly higher than any other program out there. And we are in the, that 99% range of, of success rate. Um, you know, I think the other thing too with Camp Hope is it is an, it's an open air campus. Mm-hmm. No one is forced there. You know, we do get guys that are uh, court court mandated to be there, um, but the guys that we get there that are not court mandated to be there, it is hard. Right, mm-hmm. but they stay and they can leave whenever they want to. No one's gonna, you know, they're not on lockdown. They're not, you know, it's not a gated community. It's not, you know, behind lock and key. Um, you know, if they want to leave, they get their things and they leave. Um, most don't because when you get there, when you get to camp up, you can feel that presence. Um, you know, also my team does a really good job of kind of setting the tone for them, letting them know what those expectations mm-hmm. are going to be because it is difficult. Veterans don't tend to be a selfish group of people. Um, the only times that we're usually selfish is when we're doing destructive things mm-hmm. and we're, we're not thinking about, you know, anything else in the path. But when it comes to who we're going to help, we don't usually tend to help ourselves. Um, so, you know, we tell them we need them to be a little bit selfish and go out there and focus on them and work on them. So you could say it's not bounding somebody to stay there. No. It's mm-hmm. bonding with somebody right. to stay there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, you got, you got yeah. over at any given time, there's 120 combat vets out there mm-hmm. that are um, there for you, truly there for you for whatever you may need. Um, and you, you don't, you, the last time we had that was when we were in service, sure. you know, so mm-hmm. sure. Uh, you know, when we leave, whether you did five years or you did 25 years, when you get out, you lose a big portion of that day to day camaraderie and fellowship and brotherhood. And, um, you know, Camp Hope kind of recreates that a little bit. Our warrior groups recreate that a little bit to, to get a community behind each individual that's struggling. You mentioned warrior groups. Tell us a little bit about that and how that works. Yeah. So, um, a warrior group, you know, we, we kind of explain a little bit. It's kind of like AA for PTSD, mm-hmm. but it's it's a lot more than that. It is truly a avenue for us to to give our burdens back to God mm-hmm. and to do that in an environment where you can look across that room. And it doesn't matter if it's a Vietnam vet, if it's a Desert Storm vet, if it's an Iraq vet, Afghan vet, it doesn't matter. You can look across that room and you can see in their eyes that they're genuine. You know that they're going through the same thing, that you're truly not alone. Uh, it fights that isolation. We do have a, a curriculum here in the Florida chapter that we run. It, it's similar to the combat trauma healing manual that we utilize out at Camp Hope, um, but it's kind of split up a little bit differently, mm-hmm. um, and, you know, more in an, in an outpatient setting. And that's kind of what, what we want. We want to be able to catch guys before the need for Camp Hope. Um, you know, our camp, the guys that we set at Camp Hope are going to be our higher risk individuals that need mm-hmm. a little bit higher level of care. Um, but it's it's really a, a group facilitated by a combat vet that is going to help build that camaraderie and fellowship within that small community and let those individuals utilize each other then moving forward to continue to grow in their faith and their you know social aspect and their you know every part of their lives. So um, and we also offer family groups as well. Um, we believe that it's important to integrate that family into the treatment plan uh, relatively quickly so that they can get that education and awareness and also mm-hmm. get some of that healing as well. But um, it's it's really a guided discussion for us to unpack mm-hmm. all the ugly things that we've got to deal with. That's really the best way I can describe a warrior group. We are blessed to be able to bring a warriors group here to our church here at Trinity. And um, the, the, it starts out small. I know that I know that does, but it. And you're so um, I'm sick, so excited. I know it's going to spread. I know it's yeah. going to be, but I think the big thing is uh, what I see you guys have done, and uh, I'm facilitating the one here at, at Trinity mm-hmm. is that you're building a core when you start off and you start out mm-hmm. small because these guys that stay with you mm-hmm. in that core end up being facilitators themselves, right. end up being able to really be able to reach out and be able to. Uh, find some good folks and that's it i think that's honestly that is our kind of our Mm -hmm. our core you know cookie cutter model if you will right is Mm -hmm. if i'm if i'm extending my hand to you and i'm pulling you up out of that dark place all i ask is that you turn around and reach your hand out as well 
grab someone else's hand, pull them out of that dark place with you, and we'll just continue to pull until we can hopefully get everybody out of that dark place. And that's that's really, really our goal is to just keep that chain going, you know, as long as you possibly can. Well, tell me about the state of Florida now. Now, well, first of all, you're in all just about all your states now are being covered, correct? Yeah. So we have um, seven chapters that have a physical location with mm -hmm. Florida, Florida being the newest one. And then we have a national team and a navigation team mm -hmm. that covers all the other space in between. Um, obviously we're, we mainly focus, not mainly focus. We focus heavily on the hotspots, right? So you have Texas, um, California, and Florida are your big three. Um, Florida is number three in terms of veteran population, mm -hmm. but we're number one in suicide. Um, the Tampa area is also the most densely populated veteran uh, community in the country. So there's more veterans per capita here than anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So the landscape is is very different. And there's a lot of um, organizations out there that, you know, say a lot of things and, and are going to, you know, they tell you, oh, we will help you with this. We'll help you with this. We'll help you with this. And really all they do is just kind of gather up your information and then send you to another resource mm -hmm. with no real follow up or aftercare. Mm -hmm. And um, that's something that we've had to really combat because when I tell someone I'm going to be there, we're going to be there. Yeah. Um, and you no, know, there's been plenty of times where we've showed up to a veteran in the hospital that just had a suicide attempt and the police are asking us to come and talk to him, get him to mm -hmm. Camp Hope, whatever the case. And we get there and they're like, you guys are the first ones to ever show up mm -hmm. that said that they would be there. And, and to me, it's, it's heartbreaking because, you know, we have, we have a veteran coordinator out in Houston and uh, he doesn't have any VA benefits based on his discharge. He doesn't have a lot of things that other veterans do have. Mm -hmm. But he was in a rough, rough spot. And he'll tell you, he, he's, he's an amazing speaker, right? Amazing speaker. He tell you all the time that we are QRF, right? We're a quick reaction force and that no one else is coming, right? And not to, you know, bash any organization or anything like that. But, you know, the VA is overwhelmed. If you go into the VA right now, mm -hmm. to try and get a mental health appointment, you are waiting at least 90 days. Mm -hmm. minimum right and and who can wait for that no you know no. if you're a veteran in crisis who can wait for that and their their next best option is to send you to you know a hospital somewhere where it's, it may may not even be veteran centered and so now you're talking to someone just on a clinical side which the clinical side is is certainly important and we have that clinical aspect mm -hmm. at camp hope but that peer side is where you're going to get the meat and potatoes out of that veteran he is going to talk to another vet it's, it's almost a guarantee and because we check each other. Mm -hmm. You know, you meet yep. a veteran, the first things you ask, you know, who are you with? Where'd you deploy? When mm -hmm. were you there? All those things, you know, just to make sure they check GMO, out. Yeah. But then, you know, but then you, you're instantly friends and yeah. you instantly start talking to each other and Hold each know, other kind of yeah, and sharing more things than you would normally share, you know, and um, like I'm blessed, Lewis and I served together. Uh, we live three minutes away from each other. We work together. So we have that, that relationship. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but a lot of guys don't. Mm -hmm. So well, later today, I hope uh, about 2.15, I think today we'll have a, a guest come on the telephone with us. And this was my best, my, my closest guy in, from Vietnam. So Tom. Two old guys, Don Huddle, man, <laughs> and uh, two old dogmen. And I want, I want him to be able to hear this also. I hope he's watching now and listening now, but. Don is a special guy, and, and you know, when you serve with somebody, that, that's a bond that's, I tell you right now, it's lifetime. Mm -hmm. It's lifetime. Because Don and I have been, mm -hmm. but over 50 years now, wow. been best best friends. Yeah. You know? And it's uh, it's something to look forward to. It really is. And you can look back on each other and say, you remember, I remember that. Yeah. I remember when, you, uh, oh I remember when your beard was, yeah. uh, wasn't was so white. You know? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> we do it every day, actually. It's sure. funny. Because you know, like our wives are friends, and you know, our yeah. kids will hang out and you know play mm -hmm. for the same football program, and every day it's like, dude, do you remember when? And you know, and it's yeah. just it's it's wild. So it is, um, and and I encourage like even in our groups, we encourage sure. guys, you know, reach out to some of those guys you served with. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you you might be that phone call that saves their life, and you know, it might have a little bit of saving on your end too. So um, it is important. So if you're listening, I do encourage you to reach out to your buddies. And just you don't have to talk about all the bad and all the no, the death or no. anything like that. Just talk and catch up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that takes a while to catch up. You be surprised. And uh, I'll share with you guys when we're off here a letter I got uh, from or, or email I got from a friend of mine that saw my uh, my sermon I did at the church, and he lives way up in Virginia, mm 
and he was a he was with me, and I hadn't talked to we call him Fish. I hadn't talked mm -hmm. to Fish in a long time, and wrote the nicest letter about you know about what I was doing and how it affected him, mm -hmm. and it was just. To get that contact started oh, again, I mean, to be able to reach out because they're going to know somebody that you knew that we don't know where they're at yes. and they'll find them for you. Mm -hmm. And that's what Don and I have been. We've been finding these guys. There's about, uh, I think about eight of us now that were all served at the same time. I know their dog's name. Now that's oh, how wow. we can tell each other right away. Yeah, wow. yeah, what's your dog's name? Oh, his was Fritz. Mine was Sandy. Mm -hmm. His was, you know, mm -hmm. spooky or whatever. You know, all, we knew their <laughs> dogs better than we knew them, really. But the thing that the bonding that we all have is something that is, is so akin to what Jesus Christ has with his followers and with those that serve him. It's a bonding that's going to be not only just here on this planet, but it's going to be forever. And I really believe that when, uh, when the, our time comes and we go to that reunion, mm -hmm. it's going to be an incredible reunion. We're going to see guys that... Uh, I don't care what shape they are when here on earth, they're going to be whole there. Wow. And that's what we all need to strive for. Um, we have one of the other important things about this foundation is that what they said, it does not charge the veteran at one cent. And it's all by donations that this is possible. And throughout the, uh, throughout the United States, the PTSD foundation has different fundraisers events. I think we're having our first, big fundraiser here in Tampa, Florida. And I'm going to let, uh, I'm going to let Nick talk about this and we're going to throw up on the air. If you blow that up, you can see that about our, the fish tournament that's coming up, the fishing tournament. Yeah. So fishing tournament is going to be on April 18th. Uh, it's going to start at seven, I believe registration seven thirty AM and it's going to go to five. Um, so it's going to be, um, you know, relatively close shore fishing um for snook and a redfish i believe and um really we are we are a privately funded organization um so i know like in the video it, it talked a little bit about that we we don't get a ton of grants just because of the population that we we serve uh we're not specific enough because we work with all eras and we're not uh we also work with um bad conduct and other than honorable discharges mm -hmm. as well so because of that, you know, we work with, you know, those undesirables that the government kind of deems uh, mm -hmm. it makes it a little bit harder for us to get um, some grants that other organizations are able to get. So thankfully, we've survived as long as we have because of the generosity of others and some of these companies that work with us. So uh, this is a great opportunity to come out and, you know, in reality, put your money where your mouth is. You know, I hear people all the time like, oh, I'd love to do something for veterans. You know, we have sponsorships from all levels. You can pay fifty five dollars to come out and just eat dinner and mingle and hear some guys' mm -hmm. stories that, you know, we've been able uh, to bless and been fortunate enough to be put in their path to uh, to help change their trajectory of their life. Um, but that fishing tournament, it's going to be a good time. I think the women are going to have like a paint and sip going on during the day, um, you know, while the guys are out fishing. And it's, it's going to be uh, put on by Grateful Americans Charity, which is a charity that um, came about by helping the PTSD Foundation. So uh, we're the only organization that they support. They go out and they run events all over the country to bring people together in a networking environment, but also to kind of educate and bring awareness and do the fundraising effort for us. So um, they're an awesome group of individuals that that work tirelessly for this. Um, and like Pastor Ted said, this is our first uh, fishing tournament out here in Florida, first Grateful Americans event here in Florida as well. So I, I need all the help I can get in terms of getting people signed up. Um, the model for it is for a boat, you're going to get, it's $3,000 to sponsor a boat. But with that, you get the, the boats included, the captains included. It's just you and two other individuals that you bring to go fishing. Everything's provided. Uh, you'll get dinner, the awards, everything. It's 3000 basically $1,000 per angler, but you get everything included. Um, you'll get a really nice swag bag too. It'll be a rucksack with some really good merchandise in it. So it's a it's a good opportunity to get some good face time with some of your clients um, or to just get out on the water and not think about anything for, mm -hmm. yes, for, for a few few hours. So um, definitely need all the help we can get spreading the word for that. The um, if you go to Grateful Americans Charity dot com and go to events, it's going to be on there. Click the big red button that says register and you can look at all the different ways that that you can participate and be involved. 
that's an, another important thing. Get involved. <laughs> Not only with the sponsorship and so forth, get involved. They need volunteers, need people to help. So let's call on the Tampa area here. We've got a lot of veterans here. We've got a lot of great families here. We've got a lot of people that are patriots that love our veterans. Here's one way you can do it. Get involved with this fishing tournament any way that you can help. If you know how to cut bait, that would be good. But if you know how to you know, gather people around to bring them and show them a good time at this fishing event, you're going to see it's going to have a wonderful dinner that evening. Uh, I'm probably sure they'll have some guest speakers and so forth. But all that during the day, what a great thing. You have somebody that you really want to uh, show a good time to. What a great idea. You got a client that you want to bring out and say, hey, I want to take you fishing, but this is for a good event. Now I want you to come with me. This is an awesome event to do. And we just pray that you take a look at where this is going. This money is needed. It's needed desperately to be able to keep these programs going. And if you can, by spreading this broadcast, we're giving you permission right now, any way that you want to share this broadcast about the PTSD Foundation, the videos that we're showing, the websites and so forth, please, please do it. Any other guys, uh, folks out there that are blogging or have, this goes anywhere and everywhere. We are non, we're a nonprofit also, uh, Veterans Radio Ministry and, of course, PTSD Foundation. So we don't care. We want you to please get the word out, get the good word out of what's going on. We got some great men here. We got some great patriots here. We got people that not only have served our country, but are continuing to serving the country and serving those who have served. What a you know, what a great blessing, what a great calling. And we're asking for you to join us, to help us out. Get involved in your local community. Get involved here in Tampa. This is the core right here in Tampa for the PTSD and VRM. This is our core right here. And we want to spread this out and get PST Foundation funded for years and years to go down the road to keep this up and going and let it grow. One of the things that uh, that Nick is going to be, I'm going to talk to him about and to share with you is about doing a Camp Hope and starting one here in Florida. Tell us about your 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 goals there and your and your dream. So the the biggest thing too is it, it's honestly. Not even as much my goal as, you know, a lot of people that we work with out here um, have asked for it, has said, you know, when when are we going to have a Camp Hope in Florida? Um, you know, it, it can be a little bit difficult to get a guy who, is, you know, is on that high risk side to get him 1,500 miles away for six plus months sure. in, into Houston. Um, so we have to we have to have more resources at the ready for someone that can't go and spend six months away from their family or from their job or whatever the case may be. Um, where if something was more local, it would, it would help in that regard. But, um, you know, our goal as an organization is to, is to serve those big three, to have a central East and West, right? Obviously East being in Florida, central being in Texas and West being in California to serve the larger veteran populations mm -hmm. that we have. Um, I think right now we have, um, some challenges that we're going through as an organization in terms of changes and making sure that we're compliant and doing the best for our veterans that we mm -hmm. have. So mm -hmm. there's a lot that we have to figure out in order to make sure that Houston Camp Hope, the original Camp Hope is, is strong and going to last, you know, COVID taught us a lot of things in terms of, you know, kind of what people will turn off um, in terms of donation and stuff like that in the event of a pandemic. So, um, you know, thankfully we're on the, the backside of that now. Obviously the world still looks a little bit different with you mm -hmm. know, remote work and just what companies are able to do and, and everything. But um, we are learning as an organization to kind of secure our future in terms of getting medically licensed and, and doing right by our veterans to make sure that when they finish these programs, that it is nationally recognized mm -hmm. that they have that on their belt. Because some of these guys will you know, come out of jail, go to Camp Hope, and then come back and we're still fighting that felony here in Florida. Mm -hmm. We're still fighting, you know, whatever that charge was. And um, if we could just get a better national perspective of it and get that program recognized to where it's like, yes, you know, individual made a mistake. Mm -hmm. right? We are a second chance organization. Mm -hmm. If if they recognize that, okay, Camp Hope is a place that they went to get some hope and healing and they are coming back ready to, to be a productive member of society again, 
then I think that that would go a long way and, and honestly make our jobs a little bit easier too when we're looking on that employment side for some of these guys. So having one here in our backyard would be would be ideal. Um, but uh, the cost and the logistics and everything and, and it is it's very high because you know we, we never want to be at a place as an organization where someone's going to have to pay for us to help them, mm -hmm. right? So um, and as long as we stay true to that model, other people have to step up and help us out, help us help these veterans um, to where, you know, because we could start a camp up tomorrow if veterans are willing to pay to go in it and pay for their own treatment. Sure. Sure. But um, are they going to get the most out of it? So, um, and is it going to, you know, keep us true to who we are mm -hmm. for, you know, the reasons that we do it um, and things like that? You know, a lot of veterans struggle with just putting food on the table. I couldn't imagine. I mean, right now I wouldn't be able to, pay for my way to go and get treatment like that. It's, I think right now it's right around $30,000 uh, for a mm. veteran to go and, and get that treatment through Camp Hope. Yeah. So, and we have at any point in time, we have 90 beds full of veterans. So it's a heavy price tag. Mm -hmm. All of us here are asking you from the bottom of our heart to help, to be able to help the PTSD Foundation. All our contact information is is, uh, is is on the air here. You can take a look at it. The contact information for PTSD. Uh, we'll, we have some PSAs that will be running throughout the show that we're going to be doing. And uh, go ahead and do, if you would, run one of those um, one of those videos, if you would. While Drew sets that up, I want to thank again our, our producer here, Drew Sinclair. He's Master of the master of it all. I want. I want to say something too. Sure. To the unseen um, wounds of. So, the symbolism, right, of the fishing tournament, right? Mm -hmm. Um, why did Jesus, you know, choose fishermen as apostles, right? It's and it's it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing, right? It's mm -hmm. um, why are fishermen, right? Fishermen, they're resilient. They they go out, stay out long nights. They don't catch anything. They but they do the same thing the next day, right? And it just goes, it just goes, goes to show that you know the the character of a fisherman, right? He 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 knows how to be, go through adversity. He knows how to, mm -hmm. um, he knows how to, you know. It, um, what I'm trying to say is he, he knows how to right, fix a situation when things are bad. He knows uh, he's not going to always catch a fish, or he's not always going to have a uh, fish to sell. You know, um, no matter what the weather is. Yeah, yeah, get, yeah. So. The beautiful thing about right the symbolism of the fishing tournament right is he's uh he chose his apostles you know to be fishers or men right and i think the thing the, mm -hmm. the big thing with the fishing tournament right and same thing with you know the peer-to-peer -peer mentorship mm -hmm. at camp hope is right why choose veterans why choose uh combat veterans right because we you know we've we've seen those things we've been there done those things um and just that symbolism right it's just such a beautiful thing um you know the, the fishing tournament and you know I, I personally, you know, it's hard to explain, right? But when you think about it, it's it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. For many years, um, uh, my dad was uh, a professional fishing guide mm -hmm. here in the state of Florida. Drove an airboat and so forth. He was a, a Navy frogman, a Navy SEAL. Uh, before they were SEALs, they were called UDT frogmen in World War II. And uh, he passed away at 93. And that was just a couple of years ago. But up until he got sick with cancer, he was probably the strongest guy I've ever seen at, at that age, whoever. Because he was out there fishing every day. He was out there bringing people out there. And it, there's a quietness about being out there also. Mm -hmm. It's a peaceful time when you're out there with the Lord. He's right there with mm -hmm. us. He's right. You're seeing the sea, the sky, whatever. And there's a calmness that fishing tournament will bring also. Mm -hmm. It's going to gather. We're going to gather a net full mm -hmm. of, of hope, of not only hope, but also of um, God's blessings mm -hmm. are going to be coming from that oh, yeah. tournament. They really are. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Drew, if you want to go ahead and run that, that video. The name, PTSD. Veterans continue to suffer rather than ask for help. We can only imagine what has happened, but we see the effects. They've carried many burdens, 
Asking for help shouldn't be one of them. PTSD Foundation of America Veterans Line. They answered the call. We answer theirs. PTSD Foundation of America. Find out more today. The unseen wounds of war have a name. PTSD. Veterans continue to suffer rather than ask for help. We can only imagine what has happened, but we see the effects. They've carried many burdens. Asking for help shouldn't be one of them. PTSD Foundation of America Veterans Line. They answered the call. We answer theirs. PTSD Foundation of America. Find out more today. Hi, I'm David Malsby, welcoming you onto the campus that we call Camp Hope, the residential program of the PTSD Foundation of America, serving America's veterans and their families as they cope with combat-related post-traumatic stress. It is a faith-based, peer-to-peer program at no cost to the veteran and their family. And right now, we're excited for you to meet one of the brand new graduates of our program. Want to introduce yourself? Andrew Farkas. And where are you from? I'm Tampa, Florida. Tampa, Florida. Uh, we just had an event out there this over this weekend. Um, branch and where you served? Branch of the U.S. Army mm -hmm. and uh, served in Afghanistan in 2006 in Desert Storm, Desert Shield. Mm. Uh, well, first of all, Afghanistan is certainly a place I don't want to visit. Um, but you visited a long time ago. What happened in the in-between? My life became unmanageable. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I got suicide uh, tendencies. And uh, things became very uh, weren't, weren't, weren't working out. We don't always talk about this. We're not going to get too deep into the weeds here. But just for folks watching, um, civilians in particular, um, guy signs up, joins the army, tip top shape, goes to Afghanistan, comes home, and then they hear suicidal. How? How? how I mean, not again. This isn't step mm -hmm. four, but how did that happen? Well, it, it happened, I just didn't trust myself, had feelings of the past I could not get rid of, mm -hmm. and I started isolating myself and uh, doing everything I should do to, to be away from people. And uh, it was um, uh, not, nowhere to reach out for any hope. Well, the isolation is so dangerous. It is the number one telltale sign someone's heading that direction. Uh, so you were headed that way, you were suicidal. How did you hear about Camp Hope? Uh, through another veteran, uh, a, a good friend of mine, uh, Jared Bush, mm -hmm. told me about Camp Hope and called and, and was brought here. Okay. Uh, what was it like for you coming in this place? At first, it was an adjustment. Yeah. And uh, But as I applied my program, things got better. Mm -hmm. What are you looking forward to? Looking forward to be back with my family and my grandchildren. How many grandchildren you got? I have four. Four grandchildren. Well, I bet they're excited to get you home. Yes. Help, happy and healthier. Congratulations, man. Th thank Wish you. Wish you the very, very best. If you'd like more information, again, the website is ptsdusa.org. Story and that's a, that's a good man there and I know him and um, matter of fact that's how he and I became involved um, briefly we were at in Zephyr Hills here at a veterans event that they had here in veterans and we were out there with our DRM uh, radio the little golf cart that we go around and do interviews and so forth and I saw their booth set up and I, I was interested in the booth, and I was reading the information about it. And he started talking about Camp Hope to me. I said, wait a minute, Camp Hope? I said, I have a fr friend that went there. And he goes, uh, he looked at me. I said, do you know uh, Drew, Andrew? He goes, Andrew? He says, yeah, I'm the one that took him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so Andrew was going right when right when I came on board. Yeah. You know, was, this was not long ago. Yeah. And um, it was... When I went out there, and about a year ago, actually this time, and um, spent some time with him, talked with him, and the change that he went through, you know, what his mentors mm -hmm. told me since day one, even to you know day 10, 15, 20 was was tremendous. And then even now, after you know, he, I believe he was there for I think eight months, 
seven or eight months, I believe. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's doing well. I, I just, it's to me, that's why we do it. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, it's, um, my wife put a really nice uh, post out on Facebook today about, you know, my year anniversary coming up. And, um, you know, I, I, I compare it all the time to that movie Hacksaw Ridge. Yes. Right, where he's yeah. like, you know, God, just, you know, please one more. God, one more. And, and I find myself saying that prayer often, like, Lord, please give me one more to help. Right. Mm-hmm. I, and I and it's funny because I'm always like, oh, my gosh, we're busy. We're slammed mm-hmm. like it's mm-hmm. we're so busy. But it's it's I'm happy that mm-hmm. we're busy because that means that we're we're making an impact in others lives. But. It's, it's a lot on the three of us, you know, we got over 110, um, you know, on the books right now. And, you know, it's about right under 40 a piece mm-hmm. um, that we got to make sure that we're on top of every single week. Sure. You know, because that one time that we're not could be that time that they needed us the most, you know. So, um, you know, I, I haven't had a vacation since I started this job and I don't foresee one coming, um, which I'm OK with. Uh, but it's. I still to this day say, you know, ask for one more. And, um, you know, I, I know that there are there are players, plenty out there that, that need the help, even if it's not Camp Hope. And it's just, you know, kind of what we do here in the community, uh, whether it be through group or one on ones, whatever the mm-hmm. case, um, there is help out there. We will come. If you call us, we will come. Um, as Lewis said, we are fishers of men. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, we we all kind of. None of us really let let our oath expire, you know. Like Lewis says all the Absolutely. time about it, like different uniforms that he he's he's had to wear and what his country's called him to do. And we truly believe that, you know. And and you know, John came on board and and stepped right up to the plate and started helping veterans. Even when you know when he first got on it, he was like, "Man, I know what to say to some of these guys with some of this, you know." But um, you know, kept asking questions, kept diving in, mm-hmm. and you know, now someone comes to John with a problem, he's able to to jump in and get the student to, to safety really. And, and it's, you know, we are faith-based. So we look at, you know, we are uh, unfortunately sometimes rolling die rolling dice with people's lives. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're, we're truly trying to save their soul. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, you know, the more that you know, I can, can bring to Christ, the more that I can bring to help and safety. And, you know, if you're not a Christian, that doesn't mean we won't help you by any means. Um, you know, we are a faith-based organization, but it doesn't mean that you have to, to be deep and strong in your faith by any means, or even believe uh, we will still help you. It's just how we utilize his word and his book to help ourselves and then go out and help others. So what an amazing partnership we've got here, guys. The Lord's put us all together Mm -hmm. to get this word out, to try to help this uh, association. And we are in, we're in this um, for the long haul, however long that takes, because as you said, it's like the little kid on the beach and all the starfish are washing up. And the little kid mm-hmm. goes out there and he picks up one starfish and throws it back as far as he can in the deep water, back to where it can live. And an old man comes up to him and says, why are you doing that? There's thousands. What difference does that make? He says, it makes a difference to that starfish I just threw back. Mm-hmm. So we have uh, a calling and the Lord's helping us here, and we're asking you to help that calling and to get involved with it, to, to be part of this. You see, the, the saying is that, you know, a veteran is a, is a person who at one time in their life signed a check, and that check is uh, to do everything they up to and including to give their life to protect and serve the country. That honor... And that duty and that sworn, there's no expiration date on that, I feel. There's no expiration date on it. And we now have a cause. We still have a cause. And we still need to serve. And we're serving the best that we can. And we're serving the best that there is. And that's that those who have served. We're hurting right now that need, need your help that need someone that can talk to them, that need to be able to get some of these situations where they can think through it and get over it. And not only that, but find some brotherhood around it that will keep giving them strength and keep returning strength to them. Now, we know as Christians, we know that where that strength and where that uh, or that help comes from. And there's nothing wrong with sharing that. And like you said, there's some people that may not, we're not saying that we're going to turn everybody to Christ, but they're going to be exposed to it. 
and they're going to see what true Christian fellowship means, and that is to helping each other. And why do we help each other? A friend of mine, uh, Sam Davis, Medal of Honor winner, says it best. He says, we fought so hard in Vietnam because we discovered something. And these men can say the same thing about Afghanistan. We fought so hard because we learned that we loved each other. Mm -hmm. Mr. Pastor Ted, we're getting close to um, the end of our hour. And Drew, anything else that you had for us? No? Okay, we're good. Guys, before we sign off the air, thank you for all that you do. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you guys for the time today. I know you guys got a lot to do. Yeah, I got to get you back out on the street. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Keep driving, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. God bless you guys. Thank okay, you. Drew. Thank you. All right. We're done.